Welcome to the Security in 5 podcast. I'm Drew, the Binary Blogger. This is a short program bringing you security and IT related news, tips, and guidance in about five minutes. Quick to listen to, easy to understand. This is Security in 5. Thanks for listening. Episode 596 of Security in 5, and today I want to talk about a story out of Yahoo, which then ties into internal access, internal threats, and employees that have the access doing malicious things. In this case, a former Yahoo employee has pleaded guilty after he was caught and then fired, ex-employee now was charged, but he has pleaded guilty to misusing his internal access at uh, the company to hack into the accounts of nearly 6,000 Yahoo users, primarily in search of personal and private records, specifically private um, adult images, um, so to speak. But basically, this goes into the threat of your inside people with the authorized access is very real. When you look at the statistics, and it'll vary depending on who you talk to, roughly 33% of breaches happen from internal, yet we always put so much focus on the external threats, on the state hackers, on the hackers on the outside, the, the big bad internet. And yes, there are threats out there, but it is almost equivalent to the amount of threats that are realized from the internal side. And this is another case in point. So this individual um, used his internal access to get access, to get uh, deep level information about the accounts, cracked the user passwords, accessed internal Yahoo systems to compromise the Yahoo accounts. He admitted to targeting accounts belonging to younger women, including his personal friends and work colleagues. He made copies of images and videos that he found on the personal accounts without permission and stored them on his personal computer or computers at home. Then, once he had access to the Yahoo accounts, the email accounts, he went ahead and went a step further and started compromising those users' iCloud, Facebook, Gmail, Dropbox, and other online accounts of those Yahoo users in search of more private images and videos. And once he found them, he would store them for whatever purpose. Uh, and then once he was caught, he... Um, said or admitted to destroying the computer and the hard drive, which he stored the images. But anyway, this guy got caught. He pled guilty. He's out on $200,000 bail. And in February of next year, 2020, he's going to be uh, waiting to see what type of prison sentence uh, he may or may not get. But for 6,000 accounts, this guy's probably going to go to jail for for a while, unless he's got good lawyers and uh, be on probation for a long, long time. But basically, his his whatever career that he had, he, he, a 34-year-old um, software engineer, is basically over for looking for you know these types of images. But case in point, going back, is just because the people have the access, and at the time, you trust the individual with the access to do their job, unless that, it, unless that access is monitored, regulated, least privileged, um, watched, alerted on, trended, time boxed. If the employees work between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m., the accounts that they use should be disabled outside of that. If they access these level of systems, but these contain highly sensitive information, send an alert every time they hop over there for whatever reason, legitimate work or not, and so on and so forth. The point is, is that you cannot solely trust every single day for every single employee that you grant highly privileged access to that has access, not necessarily to the direct data, but has access to systems and to files that using skills and tool sets and what have you to then crack as this individual did. We need to watch those. You need to watch those. You need to leverage your SIMs. You need to leverage your logging, le leverage your, your real-time forensics, point your intrusion detection and your, your behavior systems looking internal behind the firewalls, behind the, uh, the gateways, behind the, the WAFs, behind your applications. Look what's going on in your network um, because that is a source of infiltration and risk just as much as watching the perimeter. So from this account and up all um, you can just go on google or yahoo and just search yahoo employee hacks and you'll find all the stories but basically i summarized that particular uh, story but i'm going to create a next mini series in regards to uh, a how-to it's going to be a series of blog posts and a series of um, podcasts on how to jumpstart your sim your security information event management some people say seem i i say SIM, S-I-E-M is what it stands for, whether through Splunk or the open source Greylog or ArcSight or whatever you have. 
how to uh, get started on that because as a small business, <clears throat> as a small business, as any type of business, if you're not collecting proper forensic security data on your systems and putting them on a um, aggregation or a centralized location and then putting behavior metrics, behavior alerting around that, then you are not having an efficient security program. So in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be building a um, how-to guide to jumpstart your SIM. After you get your data in there, what are the, the low-hanging fruits that will give you the biggest visibility into your security um, trending and your security behavior within your environment and get you some really, really big insight. So uh, look for that coming. Security in 5, be aware, be safe. Thanks for listening. This has been another episode of Security in 5. If you have any questions on past episodes or suggestions for future topics, don't hesitate to reach out. If you want to get additional content, special episodes, and first access to new materials, consider becoming a patron of the show. All the links are in the show notes of every episode. And remember, be aware, be safe. Thanks for listening.